Gina DeLuca here. All right, as you can see, I am set up for a straight pour and I have kind of a um, abalone inspired color palette going on here. The colors that we're using for the base coat slash background color, I have Liquitex Basics in uh, phthalo blue with a touch of titanium white and dioxazine purple added to it um, just to switch that hue up a bit. Also, uh, it the titanium white makes it more opaque. This is just the straight phthalo blue, but adding the white to the base coat and background color uh, makes it a bit more opaque. So that's a trick that you can use. Um, when I do straight pours, I have an opaque as my background color. That's the color that appears in between the cells. And um, sometimes there might be a color that I really like, but it's not opaque. You can add a bit of titanium white to it and it will become opaque. So there you go. Yes, it will change it a bit, but at least you can use it. All right, so then the next color we have is the Arteza Pearl Pastel Green. This color is very, very pretty. And my saw maker is the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in Emerald. 24 karat gold. Berry, and to the berry I added a bit of the 24 karat gold. And Ivory Pearl. Uh, and that is actually the matte metallics line. So those are the colors we have going on today. These paints are mixed one part paint to two parts Floetrol. And that mixture is then thinned with my concoction of 90% water, 10% Floetrol. Until I get the proper consistency, it will be different in each paint. Some of them didn't need it at all. Some of them just needed a drop. Some of it needed a lot. It depends on how thick that particular paint is, and even within a brand, it can be thicker from one batch to the next. The consistency that we're working with, it's about a two and a half, approaching a three on my consistency scale. It does make a mound upon a mound. That is what we're working with today. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has a video associated with this particular painting and technique that will give you all of the information that you need, the exact paint colors, brand, the uh, consistency, pouring mediums, all that good stuff. This box here has a tip for that particular technique, and then there's a color palette at the bottom that's associated with that painting. There are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors and mix and match the bonus palette cards with your technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. And these can also be used for other kinds of art, uh, crochet, beadwork, what have you, anytime you need some color inspiration. And these are available at my website, ginadeluca.net and also on amazon.com. And if you get them from Amazon, please do leave uh, feedback. It is greatly appreciated. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down my base coat. The reason I lay down my base coat is so that my paints have something to slide around upon. If you have no base coat, the paint that you pour out will stick to the canvas. And sometimes you can lose some really cool stuff. It helps to maintain the composition of your pour as you're pouring. It helps your cells to not get wonky. And then I cover the edges of my canvas because 
Straight pores are generally mixed pretty thin and sometimes you don't get great coverage on the sides. And now, even if it's not a straight bore, I still cover the sides because it is just easier to uh, be proactive rather than reactive. Easier to touch up the sides before you paint rather than after. All right, my base coat is down. And now I'm going to put some paint in a cup. I'm going to start with the blue. Always double checking the consistencies before I pour because it can thicken upon standing. Actually gonna add just a bit more. and reserving some for the top if I need it. All right, and now for the light green. And I'm pouring from up high. I want this to sink and blend. This is not gonna be a cell maker. This is actually gonna be acting as another background color. At least I don't think it's going to act as a cell maker. I guess we'll find out. But it will attach itself to other colors like that green. And then you might get some blending of the light green and the emerald. And you'll notice I am using a regular cup, not my usual measuring cup. I wouldn't mind getting some of that fingerling action. So we're gonna see what happens. And then for the ivory pearl. Even if you check it before you start painting, you want to check it again before you put it in your cup. It really can thicken up on you quickly when it feels like it. All right, and then some of the blue on top. Okay, this is a lot of paint. I'm actually going to go this way instead of that way. I want it to kind of be off. I don't want it to be perfectly centered in here, so you'll see what I mean.
bring slower and closer as you get towards the end of the cup. That will help to give you a bit more control. Oh, very shaky today. Too much coffee. All right. So, this is generally where I wind up getting boulder cells. Actually, let me pop some bubbles here. Straight pores do generate a great deal of bubbles. And you'll see, or perhaps you will, I don't know, it might be too tiny, but a lot of times when you pop the bubbles, especially in this area, you'll see a little cell pop up. It's because there's a bubble and a paint layer underneath. And when it pops, it brings that paint with it. Allowing this to sit and develop will um, give you a chance to, to get those bolder cells. If I were to stretch this right now, I would still get cells in these area, but when they popped up, they would be pretty uniform looking cells, more like pearl cells, I call them pop-up cells, which can be awesome, but I really like to stretch them out and give them that 3D glowing effect that you get from a boulder cell. And I see a cat hair. Naughty. It snows cat hair in this house, which is why I don't do resin. One of the reasons why I don't do resin. The other being, I can't really make everybody wear respirators, so I don't have a place that is not a public space or a family space. I'm in my kitchen. Well, I don't know if this is going to wind up looking like an abalone. We will find out, but so far, so good. Lots of cells. All right, I think I'm gonna hit this corner first. Tilting slowly. If you tilt too quickly, the paint will run over top. It'll roll over top of itself, basically, is what will happen. Tilting slowly will help you to preserve the lines. Actually, I'm gonna do this opposing corner. You always want to bring the weight of your paint back to center if you're going to change directions. You can find the weight of your paint. It will be where your paint is moving the fastest. And if you are aware of that, you can get a lot of control over your paint and your tilting process and your composition. By controlling the weight of the paint, I can almost make corners. You use the weight of the paint to push the other paint around.
I was hoping to keep some of that straight emerald. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. It's going to get tilted off. But I have some that has blended with other colors and that is looking pretty cool. I mean, when you can get a cell that has both green and pink in it, but no mud, how can you be upset about that? And now for the last corner. The thicker paints do take longer. You must be patient. Even if it's a thinner paint, you gotta be patient. And if you feel like you have to push it because it's never gonna get there, if you've ever had a painting that is not level, you see how much that can change overnight, it'll get there. You might need a shoulder massage by the time you're done, but it'll get there. You can see I've almost got a corner going there. Because I'm using the weight of paint to my benefit. Okay, and again, bringing the weight of the paint back to center. All right, well, this is definitely giving me an abalone feel, the way that the greens, the green and the gold and the pink have blended in these cells is like super cool. And sometimes I don't show this part, but I always do this, and so should you. And that is scraping the dripping paint from the edge, from the bottom of your painting. This will help to keep it from uh, pulling the paint from the canvas. And then if you have like a little bit of your corner that's not covered, you just take the paint that you just scraped and just cover that corner. Easy peasy. But always make sure that you do this step. It will help maintain the composition of your painting because it will pull the paint. So if you just keep uh, coming back to it every couple of minutes and doing that until it stops, you will have a much better chance of maintaining your beautiful composition. All right. Well, I'm going to let this sit for a bit. I'm going to clean up and I will bring you in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is. All kinds of sparkle. Definitely giving off a bit of that Palo Shell vibe. I do think I made the right call on adding the gold to that berry as far as it being the right color. I think by itself that berry would be too deep. But definitely getting that uh, power vibe in this area for sure with that green and the pink blending. But 
But there it is. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Help me stay afloat in the evil algorithms. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined, and also my affiliate links. Um, the Arteza link and the Deco Art links. There is also Amazon. And if you click on those links, anything that you purchase off of those websites, I receive a small commission of at no additional cost to you. And I will say that uh, the Deco Art website is where I do get my paints from because they always have more of a selection of colors than they do at the store. They always seem to be out of the colors that I want when I go to the store. Um, also in the description box you will find the link to my website GinaDeLuca.net where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards for sale. And of course those inspiration cards are available at Amazon as well. And last but not least, our Facebook group. Join us there. Go make some art. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. That is going to be it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.